I've been asked by so many people for 3D printer recommendations for a classroom or a school makerspace, so I was on the hunt for an inexpensive, non-technical, easy-to-use, space-efficient, and reliable printer. At the 3D Printing Show in New York City a few weeks ago, I found the M3D Micro 3D Printer priced at $349. The company says that price is going up, but I wanted to give it a try. One more important point about this printer, it's so darn cute. First unpacking, the size and lightweight of the box that arrived was shocking. I was sure that the three rolls of filament that I ordered with the printer was all I would find inside. But no, the whole printer assembled with power supply and the three rolls of filament was all in the box, weighing only about four and a half pounds. And when I took the printer out, the bright green color is just delightful. They come in many bright colors. The printer seemed so simple from a mechanical standpoint that the packaging to secure it was also simple. That's a good thing. I removed a bit of blue tape and a couple of plastic holders, and the thing was ready to go. I was ready to set up the printer. The box came with a piece of paper showing a link to their software and manuals. So I went to that link and quickly found one of the worst parts about this printer. And that was that the only software they had ready to go that wasn't in beta anymore was for Windows. I don't have a Windows machine. Long story short, I found my way to a Windows PC that I could use for this purpose only. I installed the M3D software and plugged in the printer to the PC. And the software quickly identified that my printer needed a firmware update, which finished in just 15 seconds. Now I was ready for the filament. I didn't see any filament in the printer. There was none hanging out of the hot end. So I figured I had to install it from scratch. So I had a little bit of a problem with that. And the filament code system that they make to make it easy for the printer to identify the right parameters for heating up wasn't quite right. One of my filament spools showed one code and one didn't show it at all. I was also slightly disappointed that loading filament internally was not very clear, so I didn't bother with that. And what I mean by internally is underneath the bed, I found out later, is where the whole filament spool can fit. And when I first saw this printer, that's what was exciting, is everything fits into that small case, which is only about seven and a half inches cubed. But I used external filament spool and kept moving. My first print was a small, simple model. It was actually a Google Docs logo keychain, and it was a good test. The first try, though, completely failed because of that filament loading problem I had. It was completely empty and took a while to get back on track, but my second try was mostly successful with just one problem. Just like in all 3D printing, adhering the model to the bed is one of the hardest things. So this company suggests using a raft, which is just a bottom layer of filament, but when it printed the raft, it got too tightly adhered to my model, and I could not separate it without ruining the model that I printed. I got through that and started with the second print, and the second print turned out quite well. The only problem I found was that the detail on the second model was not quite up to par when working in very small sizes. As in all 3D printing, making your model stick to the bed is one of the hardest challenges. I'm not sure of the material on this bed, so I don't know how to treat it, so I'm just using it as is. Mostly things stick to it, but I have found that the models are peeling off the bed a bit, especially with the larger models. That's why the company clearly prefers printing a raft on the bottom. That makes them stick pretty well. Some of the things I'm less happy about with this printer. The software is okay, but it's not that well designed from a user experience perspective. And, of course, it's Windows only right now. The, the lack of Mac software is temporary, the company says, and they do have a beta version that's ready for testing, but it's not yet stable. I'm looking forward to that. The other thing is the filament itself. It looks pretty good, but the blue and the red, at least, are somewhat translucent. They're almost sparkly. It's okay if you want that look, but for a flat, solid color, I'm hoping their other filament choices are more opaque. One important note, too, the company response has steadily improved. I'm finding the support online to be a little better each week. In summary, the M3D Micro 3D printer is a great starter printer for people looking for low price, small object printing, space efficiency, and simplicity. It often produces good results with simple object models and hides most of the technical details from you. It's absolutely miniature. It measures just seven and a half inches in all dimensions, and it looks almost elegant on your desk. It's also not too noisy, especially compared to the larger printers. 
The company offers decent filament choices and colors, and you're probably best off buying theirs, but I don't see why other filaments wouldn't work at 1.75 millimeters. I also am delighted with the price range. $350 is quite a bargain for this printer. I think it's great for schools and for maker spaces, especially if you want to buy two or three so you can print more objects for more kids at the same time.